So that's comic books. That's what I've learned. I'm sure other people do it much better and much more efficiently than I do, but that's sort of my process. No, it's, it's very interesting that you always kind of like, you always go back and reread your old stuff. I'm the same way when I'm writing something myself. I go back and reread and say, okay, um, I set this up. I never paid this off. I have to make sure that this pays off down the line. Oh, yeah. I, I have to make a note. I, I have a weird thing that I do when I write. And, um, I, you know, I, I do an outline and everything and, you know, I, I have, I spend a day just kind of writing questions the same way you yeah. do because that's something super helpful when I'm like, okay, well, like, let's go deep into this. How does, how do the Zords work? How does, how do the, the, the this element work or, or anything like that? But then after I kind of get a little bit of an outline, I go into an Excel document. And what? I, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm weird, man. I, I go, go on with this Excel. I don't, even, I don't even think I have half Excel on my computer. Keep going. <laughs> so I go into Excel and I type in, um, like page one, page two, page three, I create like a document all the way okay. down and I do issue um, issue breaks all the way on top. So if I'm doing a six issue arc, I do issue one, issue two, issue three, and I break out what happens on each page. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do something similar to that, but I don't do an Excel, but yeah. And then that for me visually, it's just like, okay, this page has this, this page has this, and this that's my way of breaking out the beats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a way that like for me, because I, you know, I do a lot of accounting and stuff. So for me, it's like, I love to see it in visually like, okay, this is the beat that we're reaching at the end of the first issue and this is the cliffhanger and this is how we set it up for the next part. Mm -hmm. And so this is the way I kind of like to break it out for myself. Yeah, so yeah. I do something similar in the sense I just lay out like the, when I do the script, I basically just lay out page one through 22 or yeah. one through 20 and then I write each what each page is mm -hmm. and then break the whole. I actually sometimes I've learned recently if you're doing like a four and you probably do this as well. Yeah. I just figured, like if I do a four, four as you are, which are a lot of the GoGo Power Ranger ones, like the earlier I can break down all the issues by page, not necessarily by story, but like what each page is, yeah. then you know how much, because I, I had this happen in, in, it happened a little bit in, in the Shadow Grid stuff, was like I got to, I was writing issue 10, 11, what's this, this is 12, right? So I was writing issue 11, and I realized that I, I, I was like, I should look at 12. I got a, I got a lot of story in 12. Let me make sure. Let's look at 12. Yeah, yeah. Like I have a <laughs> lot of story in 12. And I was like, I got to make sure I have enough room to do all of the stuff that I had to do. So actually I broke all of 11 down by page. And then I broke all of 12 down by page and realized that I didn't have enough room in 12. So I had to move up like two or three of the moments in the first in 12 into 11 oh, just wow. so I had enough room. And that's the same thing. It's like you started like the earlier you can figure out like, okay, this is kind of how much room I need need for each scene yeah it's weird uh, somebody said this about comics I thought was super cool it's like t uh, writing for TV is time and writing for film and TV is time writing for comics is space like you measure importance by how much space you give them as opposed to how much time which is think like for instance like in a fight like a fight in a comic book is like three pages but like it's like one punch two punch three punch four that's a whole page yep. right in a, in a in a TV show that's like one two that's three seconds of time. So like action doesn't, action takes a lot of time to shoot, but doesn't actually take up much room in your actual episode. Yeah. But in a comic book, the more fighting you have, the less the less space you have for all of the conversations and yeah. all that stuff. So it's a different muscle. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't have the mic. It's a different muscle uh, to, to stretch and to use when you're writing comics as opposed to TV and film and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting because as a medium, I would always, when I first started writing, I would do action scenes and one of my mentors in Brian Bucciolato would tell me, okay, yeah, Brian, he's a good guy. <laughs> he is a, he's a great guy. And he would go and he would say, okay, you're doing three pages of action here, which the story obviously needs. Yeah. But you, at the same time as you're doing the action, you have to be writing and having the, the plot move forward yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's it's something that's like those are the emotional moments during the action. Whereas if if there's something like going on in like a movie or TV show, it's just one of the subtle differences. Like the action is the action, mm -hmm. but in comic books, the action is also the story and the emotion. Totally, yeah. And it's, it's the it's tension. Like a, somebody explains to me, it's a little like a musical. Like the really good musicals that you watch are the ones where um, when the song, it's not they they go along they along they break into song, and the plot stops, and that that doesn't work. When the but however, when the plot, when the story, when the song is moves the plot along, you know, like when it's like, for instance, like if you've seen like Moulin Rouge, yeah, like whenever they break in a song, there it's usually the moment like when they're falling in love, yeah, so that's moving the plot forward, and that's why those songs have meaning. So, the same thing with comic book fights if the fight is just, I'm gonna see if Batman's just fighting the Joker, you know, who's gonna win that fight 99% of the time. So, what is the fight telling you? 
what are you learning? You have to learn something. It has to move the plot a lot in some way. It, it has. It's. It's how he fights. It's why he fights. It's. It's. It's what he's doing in the fight. It's. It's what the fact that he's fighting now means something else is happening. Those are things that you have to take in consideration when every fight. And it's like what somebody said. This is like the one of the greatest fight sequences I've ever seen. I, I, I agree. Is in the Pirates of the Caribbean, the first movie, the fight between Jack Sparrow and Will Turner. You learn so much about those two characters as they're fighting. You learn that the way they fight, how they fight. You learn plot elements. You learn about the fact that that Johnny's not an evil. Like you learn yeah. so much. You learn it's, about their personalities. It's you teaching learn. you who these characters are in a fight, and that's why it works so well. And like you have to take that into consideration whenever you're writing comics, specifically in fighting. Like the fight hat. It can't just be the fight. The fight because you know you're gonna ninety nine point seven percent of the time the good guy's gonna win so it's how they win why they win and what and and what changes because of it yeah so i agree it's it's when you do it right you have to always constantly reminding yourself that fight has to reveal character and plot they really do it's super interesting you know you and i are both big fans of Watchmen. yes and um i think everybody who grew up in the time frame (laughs) that we grew up in sort of has to be a fan of Watchmen. you know (laughs) it's so interesting because that book was the quintessential everything matters that was a book that was like okay we're not going to deal with monthly schedules we're not we're going to make it we're going to put our heart and soul into every page and we're going to make it so everything matters and you know the way they did their nine panel grids the way they did their 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 hot cold panels to keep it refreshing like they did so much to kind of push the medium forward yeah you can see them. You can you can also feel them sort of fighting against the medium a little bit in the sense of like like this is the nine panel grids and like the way that the way that they were like th- there was a lot of restrictions I think from comics at that time where people weren't really like like the artists were sort of doing stuff in a very sort of familiar way and you could feel them like poking at the edges a little like I mean granted they also would like the the Dr Manhattan ep- issue they completely th- they broke the the they broke the stuff on the ground and just said this we're doing something crazy uh, I remember reading that issue the the Manhattan the Dr Manhattan on Mars issue and just like it changed the way I perceived time yeah and I was just like what oh that's true like you would see it like this is like a, as a line yeah, instead of as a it, like, like I remember thinking like oh my it was like in the way that they used the medium the comic, like, I think that works so well as a comic book medium. I, like, I don't Because you can go back and l- look at it yeah, in the same way. You're it's, him in yeah. a weird way. It was so weirdly meta, but, like, and it was, it's one issue. It's 22 pages, and it's, like, it's maybe two of the 22 of the most and amazing gorgeous. pages ever. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so perfect. gorgeous. And that whole book does so much of that, uh, this back and forth of just playing with everything. I didn't know recently until, like, until recently that it was sort of a, that those characters are actually based on characters that he didn't create them or he did no they didn't yeah they were based on um i forget the imprint but there was an imprint that dc had and it was um i want to say it was like not comico or so what might have been something like that it might have been comico but it was like um dr manhattan was uh superman kind of guy right he was he was no he was actually supposed to be captain adam Oh, okay, that's right. So he took all the characters and sort of just like he like 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 you know Funhouse yeah. mirrored him a little bit. So like that's what he does. Like it's funny. We love Alan Moore, and I'm not ripping. I'm not Alan Moore, so don't get me wrong. Yeah. But like you look at a lot of his work, and like you look at like extra the, in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and you look at and you look at you know he like and you know Watchmen. It's like he he is a great revi- like he he's a remixer too like he likes to take other people's toys and go mm-hmm. eh, let me let me show you how to actually play with these which is interesting because it's like I, I i don't know that's one of the things about i think comics is like the greatest part about comic books is just and being part of gogo it's like the same thing it's like all i want to do is it's a it's it's say it's power rangers it's 25 years of history it's got so many fans and so much tv and like it's a giant wall of mythology right like all these characters and everybody has their favorite team and their favorite car- ranger and all these and all this stuff and their favorite story and like all i want to do as a creator is just i want to add one brick to that wall that stays so that in 10 years somebody i could be like i look i made that i did that one thing i think it's all and that's what's cool about comics is like you're just kind of and some of those bricks you add don't stay you know of like course. you write a story and like there's been what thousands of batman stories yep. and like a lot of them people don't talk about but we always talk about death in the family we always talk about yeah, um, you know rip or we talk about uh, hush or what hush yeah like everybody there's like these these quintessential yep. moments and it's like you just kind of want to add a piece to those moments and that's what's cool about like about you know just doing comics in general it's like that's the goal in a weird way it's not making your own wall it's some for some people it is but like i really like the idea of adding of, to it yeah it's sort of like paying it forward yeah like i grew up loving some of these characters and and like the idea that i could 
shape them for like the next generation or for the fans who also love them in a way that makes them happier is like a really cool part of the process. Absolutely. It's yeah. like imagine 20 years down the line someone's like, you know, the Brian's character and I'm going to bring him back in or bring yeah. her back in and Well, like for for this, for yeah. for for Ranger Slayer, like what's been cool is like she's in she's in Beyond the Grid yeah. uh with uh with Marguerite's book and like I've just been reading what she's been doing and it's it's I love that I got to tell my story with that character and then I kind of got uh, then like hand off. Yeah, the hand it off and and I like that I don't like some people are very protective about their characters and like no one that's the story I wanted to tell I don't think that at all I'm the exact opposite I love the idea that I crafted them told my story and then I can hand them to somebody else and then they can go tell their own story and they can evolve completely independently and like I love that I love that idea of of coming back and seeing them and being like I never thought about that I never thought about the way that they that's a good point you know like I love I love seeing other people play with play with that that character because I, I just I don't really own it yeah. I, I, I'm renting yeah. you know that's it. We, you can only hold on to whatever you yeah. can hold on. And it's like, I made the apartment the way I like it. Then I leave and I come back and I'm like, I never thought of putting the couch there. You know? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's fun. It's, I think it's people really underestimate how much of a collaborative process comic book is. Oh, God, yes. And we always talk about how it's artist, editor, uh, writer. But for a lot of like licensed book or a lot of, you know, IP, it goes beyond that. It goes into you're working with other generations of people as well. Oh, you know? yeah. And I it's. Mean, yeah. And it's something that's a lot of people don't realize is that it's your your take. Not only are you growing previous things from different IP, like so for example, you know you're taking like you know the pilot for for Power Rangers and you're growing that into its own thing, but you're also leaving something for the next generation of writers to come in. Well, I hope if you do it, if right. you do it right, if you do it right, <laughs> yeah. you shouldn't break all the toys. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, I, that's the thing that just working with license because I've worked in I, I saw I worked in Star Trek. And then, and Batman is also a licensed book as well because it's, it's oh, yeah. it, you know, it's, it's like, it's not, but it is. It's just that they are the licensor. Um, but like, they're never yours. And, and the people who run them have to take into consideration. Like, look, every writer wants their story to be the most important thing in the world. It's of like, course. This is the story. And like, this, this is, is going to change everything. Exactly. This is the one. But their job is like, they're looking at it, the whole brand. They're looking at their, and they're not, a, they're also looking at like, okay, that story is great for now, but I got to tell stories for the next 25 years too. So you can't do something that makes it so that I can't tell any more stories. Because that's also not fair to the next generation of writer that's going to come along. You want to you wanna tell your story, but I don't think you want to... Like, if if, if, if you want to do, a, like, a Batman story, but then you murder Alfred, then you've, you've taken out the opportunity for every writer who ever wanted to do an Alfred Batman story. Like, and that, you know what I mean? Like, you take away such a key part of that character. Yes, it has, a, it has it's amazing, and that'll be an incredible story to tell for Batman because of the emotional impact. But, like... Still, like I, I want to write that character. I want to play in that world. I want to take advantage of that, of that, of, of stories that haven't been told in that arena. And so, like the license have to take that consideration is just like, you know, what's good for the moment, what's what, but also what's good for down the line. What, what's what's good for the ultimate health of the brand. And uh, I respect that. I, I, I really do think that um, there's a balance, and a, you can earn the right to hurt the to-, to play with the toys in different ways. You know what I mean? Of like course. over time, if you get to the point where it's like, look, I've done this, and then this, and this, and and I can validate this, because like licensors, they'll listen. They yeah. never say no for no sake. I've never had them be like, no. I, I've never had them actually. To be fair, and go at at Sab- Saban slash Hasbro, um, they've never told me no on anything. Wow. As long as I explained why, and. Uh, and sort of exp- and they and we talked about like what the point of it was, but there's no. But also, I'm sort of very respectful in that. I'm not gonna try and murder, you know. I'm murdering Zordon. That's like they're not gonna let you do that. Like I know the limits, but like I think that's what's helpful is like I understand. I I don't want to break the toy so the next group can't play with them. I want to yeah. build new ones. That's yeah. my my favorite thing ever. Is I just want to create new characters that that people can, the next the next person can go. If you want to play with them, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. Like that's what I. That's what the best the, the best rogues galleries are. Yeah. Right. Like I love. That's what I just want to do. I just want to make a make a bunch of other characters that can be part populate the world and then like let them all sort of like run free yeah exactly i love it yeah that's the fun part